Okay, hello, hello everyone. This is Q Rochelle here. And I am very certain this is going to be part. That's perfect timing. Part 7 of. What if Deku was a spirit detective? Now, whenever we were last left off, Deku had actually had a small run in. Well, I believe we left off with him having a run in with Karama. And now, hmm, uh, let me check that real quick. Alrighty, I just checked, and I did leave off at the hospital. Now, Deku would actually go there the next day and meet with Karama. He would say that, you know, you don't seem very evil. What's the deal with that? Karama would then say that he'll give him an explanation, but first he needs he wants him to meet somebody. So Deku would actually walk into the hospital with him, and Deku would meet his mother. Deku would be confused and would try and ask a question, but all you would hear from Karama Karama's mother is Manetta, what are you doing here? Yes, that is right. Kurama, in this timeline, when he escaped to the human world, entered Mineta's mother's body and took Mineta's place in this what if. Yeah. Anyways, that is whenever Deku would kind of be confused because he thought his name was Kurama. Now let's cut to later on in the day. Deku and him are essentially hanging out at the hospital, and they're actually on the rooftop. He would have actually given Deku the explanation that 15 years ago, that, well, over 20, well, not 20, over 15 years ago, because they're not 15 yet, and this what if. This is the year before the final year of middle school, whenever Deku actually has an encounter with All Might. And train for those 10 months before the entrance exam. Yes. So we got quite a lot of ways to go. This is whenever Deku would get the explanation that oh, back then, 15 years ago, he was a spirit fox in the demon world. And how after many centuries, many years, he essentially gained power. And he was bored, so he became a thief, in a sense. Going around, solving puzzles, and breaking locks. It was, was his, it was his favorite sport. Until 15, over, well, until 13 years ago. Let's say this is two years before the start of the anime. That makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense to me. A year, roughly, it's, this is a year before the start of the anime. So Deku's already come back to life, done all that. He would get, then say that 13 years ago, he actually did come into this world after being wounded. And he kind of took the place. Well, she kind of entered the body of this woman's child. So he, feel, he actually did feel, he didn't feel guilty at first. But over time and getting to know humans and being essentially human for so long, he had actually quite become fond of the people he knew. His father had passed away, but his mother essentially brought him up. He respected that woman. Yes, respectable woman Juice Manetta lives on. Anyways, he would then have said that because. He looks like a full, like, regular Karama, but, yeah, just Mineta. Anyways, he would have still gone by the nickname Karama, though. He would have liked it better. 
And people would know this, so they would just call them Kurama, even teachers, because they wouldn't really care. Oh, crap. I spent that, much, that long explaining it. But he essentially would say that he needs the forlorn hope to cure her illness. That she has been she's been going on like this for months, but with the forlorn hope, he can essentially trade his life for hers. He would explain that yes, he has taken he essentially took this woman's child and took his place. So he feels like he needs to return his life for hers. So after that, Deku would actually try stepping in. Well, he would have started saying something, but the doctors would have actually run up to the roof and actually tell, say, Mineta, it's a problem with your mother. Something's happening. And they would essentially run back into the hospital room and she, they would see that doctors are trying to solve what's, well, they're trying to essentially bring her back from the critical state, but they're barely able to stabilize her. They can essentially only keep her comfortable in her final moments. That she is going to be dying that night. After this explanation, Mineta... That's not... It's weird saying his name, when knowing it's a different character. Kurama, I'm just going to be calling him Kurama from now on, will be using the Forlorn Hope sooner than he would have liked. Because it means that he won't be getting its full power. He would try and sacrifice his life because if you look into this object, it will basically reflect your greatest desire, but it will kill you in the process. It will basically like the Dragon Balls, but the dragon has a knife. Now, if there is an odd cut there, that is because I got interrupted. Anyways, yeah, now then. As soon as he tries to use the Forlorn Hope, Deku would actually try stepping in and telling him that, well, telling the mirror to take his life instead, because if a mother, there's no reason for a mother to mourn over her child. If you save her, she'll just be more, more, there, moping over, over you for the rest of her life. So to take his life instead. Then there's a certain flash of energy, and Deku it would still be alive. Mineta, Karama, would actually start running back into the hospital after realizing that he's, he's still alive. Now, after this, Deku would get back up, and the mirror would say that in honor of trying to sacri- in honor of your nobi- noble deed of trying to sacrifice yourself, he has completed the wish without taking life. And that he is a noble person. Deku would then go in and actually see that his mother is actually going to make a full recovery after hearing it from the doctors. Now, after this, let's cut to the next day. And Deku and Botan would essentially have actually started coming into Deku's personal life with going to his school and actually somewhat being around a lot of people. He's hanging out on the roof, and Botan and him are going over the next demon. This is whenever Mina would walk back up on the roof. And, essentially, these two are sitting next to each other talking. She would walk up and actually see them. She wouldn't be confused on who Botan is, but she'd be somewhat kind of mad. Because, yeah. They were talking about it and they seemed to be like very invested in the conversation. And then she would walk up and Botan would try and introduce herself, but Deku would actually just like you kinda knock her on the head after she keeps trying to talk about stuff that uh Mina would not know about. And yeah. This is whenever she would have, like, immediately just realized, crap, she doesn't know about the spirit world, or anything like that. So, Mina would then kind of run off, kind of weirded out by this. 
because she seemed to be a bit stalker with adding some details, like about her mother being in the hospital and all that stuff. This is whenever he would actually have joined in, because she would have actually been going home for the day. Now, after this, after this, he would have actually told her that, well, he would have actually been walking by her on the street, and it's not a very busy one at the time, because everyone's at work and everyone's at school. So he would have actually walked by her and said, oh, it's fine, he likes you well enough, as he would cut her with the, with the sh bleh, sword of darkness. <sighs> he would then say that, well, he would then take her to his hideout. After this, Botan would have actually interrupted Deku while he was in class by essentially pulling him out, pulling him out of class. And actually explain that he has been sending psychic messages to her. He has Mina. Deku would immediately like realize what's going on. He would start running out of school. As he starts running, Botan's actually following him. Oh yeah. Anyways, after that, Deku would turn on his spirit watch and actually start going towards where he is at. He get really mad and irritated because anytime he's running in that direction, no matter how far he goes, he just keeps saying one mile away. Botan would say that he is using his energy to actually lead him somewhere. Basically, like if you were pull something on a string and your cat's following it, because you're trying to get him somewhere, and they don't want to listen. He's essentially doing that. No. Yeah. After this, Deku would arrive at the docks. And he'd be kind of few confused at why they're all, all the way down here, by the water. He would then open up a warehouse and find that there's a lot of people in there, but none of them are really moving or doing anything. Then he would introduce himself as a demon. He would open his dragon eye and then say that usually most humans would have succumbed by now, so the idiots in the spirit world actually did pick a good human. This is whenever he would say that, did you bring the two other items? He would hand them over and go over to Mina. Now, he's actually holding Mina in his arms, and he's realizing that there's something on her forehead. He would take a closer look, and then he would ask Kie, what did he do to her? He would say that he cut her with a sword, and once that Hagan eye opens, she's going to turn into the lowest form of demon. And he's not sure what a person with a quirk would turn into, actually. So he's very interested to find out. This is whenever Deku would get mad and actually run in to punch him. Kie would be surprised at how fast Deku is. And he would say that that might be, that, that was a lucky shot, and don't expect there to be another one. Because this is essentially a game of, this is essentially going to be a game of tag. The sword contains the only antidote for the Jagan Eye. This is one of Ramina's Jagan Eye would actually start opening. And Botan would actually try closing it with her spiritual power. Now then, as this is going on, Deku and Hiei are fighting. Okay, I thought I said, I thought I said the guy's name from the anime for a second. I confused myself. Deku and Hiei are fighting, and they're essentially chasing each other around. Now, Hiei would eventually knock Deku to the ground, because he was very fast. He's telling Deku to try and keep up with him. Well, no, he's telling Deku to try and keep up with him because he keeps moving. This is whenever he would do, like, an after-image technique from Dragon Ball, kind of. And trying to appear behind Deku to stab him with the sword. Or punch him. This is whenever Deku would turn around and actually punch him in the face with his right hand. Now then, after this, he would say that that was a lucky shot. 
and don't expect another one. He should be happy because this is the first time he's ever had to transform for a human. Now, he would actually transform it while his skin would turn green and a lot of extra eyes on his body would open. After this happens, Mir's Dragon Eye actually does react to this and starts feeding off the energy. So then, Deku, well, Botan would actually have to begin forcing more energy into her palm to try and keep the eye closed. And this is actually scraping and scratching her hand up a lot. So now then, Deku would get very, very angry at this, and he'd attack Hiei. Now, Hiei would feel really confused, because he's faster now. He then told Deku that he's got to give him some props, because this is the first time that he's ever seen a human genuinely care about people. Because he's gotten quite a lot faster and quite a bit stronger. So, after this, they would be fighting for a minute. And eventually Deku would realize that he has to use a spirit gun. But he can't really shoot Hiei because he has eyes in almost every direction. This is whenever he would actually see... Well, this is whenever Hiei would actually come in and try and stab him with a sword. This is whenever Kur Kurama would appear. I almost said Kurama. Is that right? Harama would appear and actually get in the way. Hiei would call him crazy for doing that. He, Karama would then cut his hand on the sword and throw blood in Hiei's Hagan eye. He then pulled the sword out. Well, Hiei would pull the sword out and Karama would fall on his knees. This is whenever Deku would have called him crazy for doing that and Karama would explain that if his third eye isn't open, he's essentially almost powerless. It's harder for him to use his power. Or he can't use his power. I don't remember what it was. <coughs> Ew, it's cold in here. Anyways. After that. <sighs> he would actually start punching Deku around and actually getting him. He would have had Deku on the ropes. Now, he would eventually fling Deku into a cargo freight, or a wooden box. After this, Deku, he would actually turn around and see Hie, and he then would try and get some distance from Hie. He would, so he would start running. After this, Hie would say that he's, he knew he was just like every other human, pathetic and selfish to the end. This is whenever he would go chasing after Deku, and Deku would eventually turn around and aim his spear gun at him and actually fire it. Now, this is whenever Hiei, because he was running straight at Deku, would have jumped into the air. He would say, nice shot, detective, but you missed. Now then, this is whenever Hiei, all of a sudden, his shadow in front of him would disappear. He'd be confused by this because he was staring at Deku when this happened, but that's whenever everything with the shadow in front of him, all the shadows disappeared and he tried to turn his head. Now, as soon as he went to turn his head, he actually got shot in the back with a spirit gun. How did this happen? The forlorn hope is a mirror, and it was sitting in the corner directly in front of Deku. So Deku reflected the spirit gun off of the mirror and hit Hiei with it. Hiei would call him quite clever before falling onto the ground, passing out. This is whenever Deku would grab, pick up the sword, break the hilt off of it, and actually run over with it and give Mina the antidote. Now, she would eventually wake up, but... She doesn't remember anything that happened. So Deku would have to... Well, he would try... Well, actually, no, he wouldn't try, but... He would eventually, like... Leave her be and let her wake up naturally. But after this... He would try... He would really have trouble trying to explain this, any of this to her. 
But anyways, guys, I'm going to have to leave this part up. Well, actually, no, not that. Deku would have actually been told by Kuenma that he did a good job on the case. But... Oh, I keep trying to... Oh, my body keeps trying to make me burp, but I can't, so I feel like I'm going to puke. Oh. Anyways, this is whenever Kuenma would state to Deku that he did a good job for his first case, and it actually was quite surprising. So, just enjoy the downtime for now. After this, Deku and Botan, she would explain to Deku that he did a good job, but since the Sword of Darkness still had blood on it, and the mirror was essentially a pile of glass, Kuenma did get spankings for, losing, for the objects being stolen. Deku would begin just bursting out laughing, and as he's laughing, this is when Mina would walk onto the roof. Now, she would feel like she interrupted something, so she would start running down the stairs. This is whenever Deku would actually go chasing after her, and... Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to be leaving this part off here, and I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Alright, later.